Hello, my name is Emil, you're watching MyVar, and today we're going to discuss the progress we have made in Apogee. So what you're seeing on the screen is a textured mesh that is rigged with bones and animated, rotating in circle while playing an animation. And um, yeah, so let's look at the code and see how we did that. <laughs> it's extremely messy, um, I, will, I will say that. It's an, uh, I've read every year I started over, since I started learning to do OpenGL. And yeah, so the last five versions of the game engine, I copied the best parts from each, um, you know, over the last like five years and just stitched it together. So it's very messy and broken. And what our objective is in the next few episodes is to go back and redo the broken parts, clean it up and join all the independent parts. For example, you'll see at the moment in the engine, um, oh my, that's slow, there we go. Uh, I am, um, you know, just haphazardly hacking in the resource loading and it's a little bit crazy at the moment. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> first off, uh, we have the animation code, which I'm going to reserve that for another episode because, yeah, but I will say, uh, I did this thing three years ago and I learned from a guy called Thun Matrix. He has a YouTube series on how to um, make um, animated stuff in OpenGL and how that works. It's in Java though, but you know, it should be easy enough to port if you wanted to learn from that. And a lot of the mathematics code in here, um, although you would not be able to recognize some of it from the original where, where I learned to do all these, is from a guy called Benny's, um, Benny's Box on YouTube. Um, and he taught me a lot about math vector mathematics and so on. Um, so you can go check out his videos as well if you wanted to learn how these things work in, in detail. Um, but yeah, so we have the mesh loader. And this is garbage. I want to rewrite this all because I wrote, I, I was making a game at the time. And I was extremely pressed for time. So I just rushed through this. Um, you know, there's a lot of hacking going on here. But yeah, this is a Kulada loader. Um, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. This is not the Kulada loader. I'm mad. Um, <laughs> Here we go, this is the Colada loader, and it's just utter madness. Um, yeah, but it works for now. It loads the animated data and the mesh and, and so on and so on. Yeah, so we're gonna replace that. The texture loader is fine, I think. For the most part, this is okay. Then we have, so the basic mesh, this is a bit messy. The one thing that needs to drastically change <clears throat> is we need to have more than one animation able to be loaded for one and then secondly we need to um, in here we, I have multiple IBOs because you can draw them with different colors when we load material data so there's that that needs to be improved a lot to integrate with the Colada stuff and then calculating the normals and the uh, tangents needs to be decided when to do that if there isn't already right now I'm just not doing any of this and then the drawing of the, the vertex attribute arrays, uh, this needs to be dynamic because I'm sending a whole buttload of information uh, like um, position, color, normal, tangent, joints and stuff that is not necessarily for every single model and it doesn't support instancing. So we need to make a dynamic a vertex system that um, allocates these fields as necessary. So there's that. Then with the shader, I don't. Uh, my other in my other engines, I have a parser, a gel SL parser, but in this case, I just hard coded everything. And again, this needs to be dynamic. So that's kind of where we're going to have to do a lot of updates. The texture code is fine. It's simple and easy. And but we need to add cube maps at some point, and rendering to them. So yeah. And then then the vertex is just an unholy mess that needs updating as well to be dynamic. Um, the multi-sampled render target is fine. I recently cleaned up this uh, in the text editor series. So that's how we have the anti-aliasing. Um, yeah, let me just, I could probably demonstrate that, sure. Um, so if I find my way down here and I do not bind the target and I do not flit it or clear or do any of this stuff, then we should see an un-anti-aliased dude running on the display. And if we just give that a second. <coughs> there we go. That loaded up. And if I make that full screen, is it good on OBS? Yeah. So you'll note that um, the lines of this guy is, see that little 
uh, it's hard to describe <laughs> fuzziness, uh, not fuzziness, the, sh the, the, the jaggedness, that's a good word, jaggedness of the, the little guy, um, yeah, I think we can see it more clearly if we um, stop him from running, I guess, so if I was to just do that, he, he should stand still. Yeah, so you see that jagged, uh, let me just see that it loaded, yeah, okay, so you see that little jagged lines on the edge there, um, right around his hand and his head, um, yeah, that's what anti-aliasing is about, and if I re-enable anti-aliasing, um, like this, there we go, <clears throat> which, this should go through a post-processing pipe, it should not be blitted directly, as well, which is another thing that needs updating. So we just need somewhere to start to avoid the chicken and egg problem, right? That's the point. Anyway, you see it's not jagged anymore. That's where the anti-aliasing is coming in. Um, and so that's where a lot of this code is is um, heading towards. Is We're going to spend a lot of time with the same code and refactoring everything until it's in reasonable shape. Um, and yeah, and there we see we have the animation re-enabled. And nothing is jagged. So that's good. Um, yeah, so there's that. The timer code needs to be automated in some way. We need some way of, um, um, what do you call it, like um, blending two different animations. So maybe a character is crouching and running, something like that. That doesn't exist in this code. It's extremely simple. Um, animations is not something I've ever used. I have this code, but I've never actually used it in a game. Um, everything is all mathematical patterns that I've coded in the past. So I want to get an anima decent animation system going. Um, yeah, we've seen the virtual file system. And then, yeah, so we have all these vectors. And we can quickly take a look at that. So we just have, like, the basic, um, you know, that's just to, for other stuff. There we go. We just have the basics here. So... Again, that's just some constructors here. Yeah, so we have the camera, which is for camera movement. Then we have projection, orthographic, translation, rotation matrix, scale matrix. And that's just to clone it, um, you know, and then we have multiple, uh, uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, all the operator overloads and we can invert one. <coughs> And I cheated by using the OpenDK one because I suck at um, matrix and vector mathematics. So we're just going to casually slide by that madness. And then here we just have some quaternion stuff. I was trying to <laughs> create a rotation matrix from a quaternion. I don't remember if I actually succeeded, but oh well. Um, yeah, well, I just ended up using OpenDK's built-in create from quaternion, I guess. That works. Interpolation. Uh, this is so uh, because you can't uh, lerp between uh, degrees of radiance. Uh, you have to use quaternions if you want to alert rotation of a model. And then we have just have a transform class, which just combines all of these things. Um, so that's easy. And then, you yeah, know, just a vector 2f. Again, uh, yeah, and the vector 3f is a little bit more involved. So it has stuff like uh, rotate and distance 2, you know, um, absolute, and then the length, normalization, reflection, lerping, clamping. Um, a repeating, um, uh, you know, uh, they, yeah, normalized dot and cross product, very important, and then the overrides, so that's what that is. This one is just uh, for integers uh, instead of floats, and then, yeah, this one is not used a lot, I don't think, yeah, only twice, which, yeah, it's used in matrix for dot transform. Cool. Um, then, yeah, so that's that. And uh, the animation code, we can quickly look at it, but we're going to go over it in more detail because I need to <laughs> refresh myself. Uh, we just have a bunch of keyframes and the animator, which this is very Java-like because I was following a Java tutorial when I learned to do this, so I want to replace this with something that's more C-sharp. We just kind of transpose all the joints and, yeah, um, calculate the progression, interpolate, and so on. So that's how that works. So this is just a joint, which has a bunch of matrix, ID names, so on. Children, it's a tree structure that so it's you know children have children of children of children and so on um and yeah that's serialization here for caching stuff so that's where most of this comes from and then the keyframe which describes um you know where things should be posed yeah using matrices um yeah so there's that uh it's pretty simple uh, really um and the way we use all these things is in here, we just load up 
we have the rect shader, which we'll look at that in a second. The perspective matrix, a mesh and a target run. We're not using the quad, I don't think. Uh, then we load it all up here, yeah. Create the perspective stuff, viewport, blah, blah, blah. Then we create a transform. This is what moves the dude backwards and rotates it. Um, scales it down a bit because the dude's big. Then we apply the texture, which is just his skin. Um, it looks something like this, I believe. Assets, diffuse. Diffuse, there we go. That's his skin, so we just apply that and using UV coordinates for texture mapping it gets applied properly, which we have to rotate that because I use wires up, I believe, if we look in the shader. Yeah, over here, so yeah, I use wires up, so we just need to flip the coordinates on one axis. And then here we just apply the joint transformations for the animations, and um, here we're transforming the RGB into sRGB space, applying gamma correction and um, yeah, I'm just kind of doing a fake pseudo lighting model, um, just a quick and dirty lighting so you can see what's going on. Well, we just the goal here is to avoid the chicken and egg problem. Um, and that's where kind of most of our efforts going in here. So that we can focus on one element, knowing the rest, the other elements are working. Um, so we don't run into any, you know, catch any two situations. So yeah, that, this was a lot of just getting it working kind of work. <laughs> um, but now that it's all working, we can go back and look at every asset individually. Uh, oh, sorry, asset, every part individually and um, rework it, refactor it, rewrite the bad parts and get this so much better. That's my goal and that's what we're gonna do over the next few episodes. I hope you're excited and you're um, uh, ready to, to um, take on this task. <laughs> I, I know I am, and um, yeah, so please do leave a like and um, comment and share if you enjoyed the video. And consider subscribing, thank you, and uh, have a nice day, bye-bye.